to do such stunning animations without code. That's not possible, you say. Well, I tell you it is. And would you also like to know how to apply such an effect to all your elements on a website? In this video, I'm going to show you how. And believe me, it's almost as easy as writing an email. Hey, we're up again doing another animation tutorial with Bricks Builder and Bricks Forge using the amazing GSAP animation library. So what you're gonna see today is how I create a nice staggered text effect which repeats every time the user scrolls down and then I'll apply it to all elements on the page, like I said. So that's a typical use case I often need and you might need too. By the way, stagger effect Speaking in GSEP terms, it means it's animated step by step, word by word, line by line. You'll see what I mean in a minute. And if you stay until the very end, I'll pull off a trick for you because for the hero, you might need a special restart effect to keep it entertaining when the user comes back. And if that doesn't knock your socks off already, you can download the bricks and animation files for free and save a ton of time. We have Bricks Builder and Bricks Forge running and I've set up some placeholder copy, a big hero text, a longer headline and some paragraphs. That's all we need. At first we want to animate the big headline. So we open the Bricks Forge panel and switch over to timelines. Let's create a new folder because we want to organize our stuff and let's also create a timeline. And uh, let's name it stagger text effect. First thing we want to set up is the trigger method and that is going to be page load. So the headline is only animated when you land on the page or refresh it. That's nice for the beginning, but later we'll improve that. Next thing to do is to choose a trigger, uh, which is the element that triggers the whole animation. In this case, we create a class called trigger, which I have already Create it and attach it to the big headline as well. Trigger. And then we have to input this class here. And that's about it for the settings. Now let's work on the timeline details. We create a timeline and then we name it just to stay organized. And then use the trigger, which is pre-selected by Bricksforge, as to determine what we want to animate when the trigger fires. In this case, the trigger itself, the headline. Now the animation will be a from type, because in this case we have built the elements as they should look finally, and we animate them from different states, which we determine now. For this animation, I want three values to change. The headline letters should appear from below. So we go to translate and adjust the Y axis to let's say 20 pixels. And I want a subtle change of size. So let's set the scale down a bit around 0.95. And the third thing, let's set the opacity to zero because I want the headline to blend in. So far when we run the animation, which we can do in the editor, it's not very impressive. And by the way, if you happen to see nothing and you think something is weird, you can always go back to WordPress and restart the editor and restart also the Bricks panel, which you can also do here. Go back to timelines and then everything should work. Let's do it again. Not very impressive. So let's give it an ease. That's the way the animation runs. The default here you can see it is linear. I have chosen another one which is called Expo Out, which looks the best with my stagger effect. But you can decide differently and also look up all the ease variations on the GSUB website. That helps me to understand them. So, although it's not impressive yet, everything is fine, but now let's turn on the split text function. This is an additional GSAP plugin and fortunately included with Bricksforge. It makes it possible to split text into its components. So let it first set to lines and watch it. Nothing really special still until I turn on the stagger function. So when I pump up the time between each step, you see the effect strangely, Bricksforge doesn't show it in the editor, but on the front end. But if we switch to words, Bricksforge shows it in the editor and that's more what I want, but I want even chars. 
and this now looks more like the way I want it. Let's go down, let's decrease also the time a little bit more and now it moves really nicely. Let's save that. By the way, turn on save also Bricks Builder when saving, that makes it easier. So when we go to the front end and refresh it, ah, that's the effect we want. Let's refresh it again. That's the thing we want. So step one achieved. We animated the hero headline. Now let's proceed with step two. Let's animate the other parts. And remember, I wanted the solution in which I can animate the whole page with just one class. Turns out, in my case, I can't work with one class, but that's just because I want to show you two effects in one video. The second class we will use because the other elements we will animate with a different effect because on this short headline we animated every character. For the longer text we will animate every line. But now let's go back. So not with one class, but the second class would be the one that we could use throughout the whole website. So let's copy the trigger timeline and rename the first one to hero stagger effect. And then the second one will be just stagger text effect. Then remove the trigger here and take a hero trigger, which I have already created, but we can see that we have the, tr the wrong trigger selector in it. So we have to correct this. And also on this side, the selector to animate is the headline. So we can click on use trigger. Now this works. On page load, it started, it has this trigger selector, it animates this trigger selector. That's all right. Let's see if this works. Doesn't work here. Let's see if it works in the front end. It works there. Let's check it another time. It works. Okay. The next step would be then to attach the trigger class to all the other elements in the website. So to the headline here and then also to these headlines here. Trigger and then trigger and so on. I don't bore you with that. I just move quickly forward. You can also turn on uh, disable float and then you can really move the website and it's easier to navigate. Okay, we're done now. Let's look at this headline. It has the correct trigger. And if we look at the settings here, we see the trigger selector is right, but it loads on page load or it starts on page load. We need to connect it to the scroll trigger. And then you see that also some things change here when I go from page load to scroll trigger because we need now to determine what happens on scroll, when to start, when to end the animation. But we just leave them in the default setting. And let's also check here, the trigger is still right because we had to copy it from the first animation. So that is all correct. Now let's save it and check it in the front end. If we scroll down now, we see that nothing works. Or oh, something works here, but really, really slow. Let's check why that is. Because we now use the trigger class, this trigger class, on several different elements, we need to tell BricksForge or GSAP to handle the triggers separately. Otherwise, it won't work correct. Why is that? Because the animations are connected to the trigger or started by the trigger. And if we have this trigger triggered, then it starts all the other animations. And this confuses GSAP. So we need to tell GSAP to handle that trigger separately. It means whenever one of these triggers comes into the viewport, then the animation should be started or according to the settings that are connected to the triggers, which at the moment is when the top of the element reaches the bottom of the screen, the animation starts until the bottom of the element hits the top of the screen. Let's now save it. Check it out. Now this 
works. So you might notice two things. The first thing is that the chars are animated or the characters. So let's change this. This is not what we want. Let's go to lines. That's the first thing. Okay, this works. Refresh it. Still, it doesn't work. Probably, let's open it. Let's go down. This moves way too quickly. So let's save this. Refresh. All right. And now we see something. But if we want to see it better, we can even add a little delay before. And now, Bricks Fortress is a weights when it comes into the viewport. So when we refresh it, you might see that it now waits a little bit. So the effect is more visible. You can even pump this up a little more. Refresh. So this is, I think, too much. But by experimenting, you find out what is the right value. So this looks nice. Now, at the moment, the animations happen when they come into the viewport, as we have defined here in the settings with the start and end of animations. So when the user now should scroll down again, they are set in stone. They don't move. And I don't like that. I like it better when the user scrolls down that the animations happen again. So this is something we can solve with the toggle actions. And you can read about it here. Just remember it has four actions. They are called on enter, on leave, on enter back and on leave back. And I suggest you to use these settings. And I explain to you in a second what that means. So on enter now means that this comes into the viewport. On leave means it leaves the viewport. If we go back, it means on enter back and on leave back is we leave the animation. So we said play, do nothing, do nothing reverse. So what it does is it plays it. On leave, it does nothing. On enter back, it does nothing. But now when we say on leave back, then it's reversed. So now it plays again. And also these play again. Let me do this again. It plays again, plays again, and is always reversed. So it plays again. <laughs> Does this make sense? Nice little trick, isn't it? But now I would like to connect all animations to the mouse crawl. And that is also super easy. So let me search for the scrub option, which is this one. This little click connects my timeline with the mouse. You could also play around with the scrub value here, but we won't do this now. Now, if we save and look at the front end, you can see me control the forward and the backward scrolling with the mouse because the scroll trigger listens exactly to the scroll position. That is a nice effect, exactly what I wanted. It also does the toggle actions instantly, so they are not relevant anymore if you turn on scrub. It just happens now automatically. But now we can even improve our animations another time because if you look closely you can see that the body text here appears at the same time which is not what I want. I want each element to appear one after another and that is also possible. We just make use of another function which is called batch. And when we now look at these elements, it's not important for this headline, but for these elements you can see that they appear one after another, which is even nicer. That's a wonderful effect and exactly what I wanted. Let's have a look. We made all this happen with, okay, two classes, yes. But each of these classes, the hero trigger, you could use to animate more short headlines that make use of the split text effect in conjunction with characters. Or you could use the trigger class which we apply to these elements to make use of the split text function with lines. And we're almost done, folks. Now we get to the bonus information. I promised to all who watched until now to tell you about how we can make the hero animation run again when the user scrolls up again to the top of the page. There are several ways, but in this case, we change the trigger of our hero timeline. We switch from page load to scroll trigger. So our hero animation is triggered on scroll, which isn't really the case because you haven't scrolled a pixel when you just loaded the page. 
But despite this, the scroll trigger registers a scroll intention and plays the animation, at least when you use the default start and end animation settings. And for this to see, you have to make use of the toggle actions. And here I found out that when you write restart into the third position, let's write play, do nothing, restart, do nothing, and the user scrolls back into the start and the end zone of the animation, it replays the animation. Note again, you have to write restart. It doesn't work with play. So let's save and check this out. It plays it and when we come back, it restarts it every time. So this completes our animations on our page. They all get played and they get replayed. And that's wonderful and all I wanted to show you. Now you know a bit more how to use the stagger effect with text for your animations. And as I also promised, you can take the shortcut and just download the bricks templates and the animation files for free. Just go to the description, download them, re-import them and boom, you're good to go. But wait, don't go. Check out my other videos and see you there.